Everyone, good evening. Let's see everybody stay. Good, e oh. good evening, Pastor. Good evening, Brother Smith. Sister good Smith. Evening. Good evening. Thank you, uh, Sister Reva, for that selection. Um, You're gracefully broken. Hey, Amen. Mm -hmm. My my favorite CD. All the songs on there. Um, uh, they get me moving. Um, good to see all of you this evening. I see we have Brother Kent Long with us uh, as well. Maybe Sister Long, uh, Brother Boney, uh, Sister Brown. Um, uh, slow getting on, uh, but it's supposed to be some more storms this evening, so I didn't want to get anybody out um, in it. Didn't want to be in it myself, but you know how it goes. Um, but we're grateful that God uh, still controls the weather. I don't know at two o'clock in the morning at my house, it was cutting up 2 a.m. I don't know about in Tuscaloosa or anywhere else. But uh, God let us know who's in charge. With all the lightning flash and all the thunder and all the rain. I mean, I on my way to work this morning, I had to take four different routes. And every the first three routes uh, were flooded. But the uh, third route, I was able to to, to make some moves. So it took me 40 minutes longer to get to work than it normally do uh, due to the storm. But anyway, um, we're going to move on with our uh, Bible study. Let us pray. <clears throat> Eternal God, we come in Jesus' name. Um, first to say thank you. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy, Father. We thank you for uh, being so good, being so loving, being so kind. And Father, we're so grateful that you uh, allowed us to see this day. Father, we ask, Lord, as we open up this uh, Bible study, help us, Lord, each and one of us to understand your word together. Father, help us to have open mind, open hearts. Give us the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that we need to understand your word and apply your word. Now, Father, we ask, Lord, that <clears throat> we would do things that would be decent in order please and acceptable in your sight. Let your Holy Spirit be among us in this meeting. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen, amen, amen. All right, this uh, evening we, um, we're we still in <clears throat> chapter six of Acts. Um, we're going to hopefully get out of it tonight, uh, praying prayerfully that we will. Amen. Um, I uh, let, we, we talk, started out talking about the office of the deacon uh, and what's, its, um, what's the purpose of it. And we looked at um, some qualifications on last week. We looked at um, the Holy Spirit, um, how when they said, let's choose seven men uh, full of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is important um, that we be guided by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit won't lead us uh, incorrectly. And then um, we want tonight start out um, because they also laid hands on. Them. And we know um, even in our own uh, denomination, um, the laying of the hands is um, something that we do when um, pastors get ordained and uh, <clears throat> Even uh, just preachers, um, when they get ordained, when uh, deaconess uh, get ordained, um, there we have this laying of the hands. <clears throat> Any questions or comments from the last few weeks before we move on to laying of the hands, and then we will get over into um, the rest of the scriptures. <clears throat> yes, no, maybe so. Okay. In, in verse five, it says, <clears throat> and the saying pleased the whole multitude and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. And then it goes down to whom they said before the apostles in verse six. And when they prayed, they laid the hands on them. So um, land of the hands and uh, not only lad, and back in that day, but even today, it's just a religious practice um, in certain uh, religions, like such as uh, Judaism, um, the laying of the hands, it accomplished um, 
basically they say it confer, it confirm uh, blessings of authority in the um, Judaism religion. But in a lot of the Christian churches, it's used as a symbolic, this kind of formal method um, that invokes the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> uh, primarily during, um, uh, during the ordination, during the uh, baptism, during the, uh, when you're confirming the ministers, when they confirm the elders, even uh, the bishops get their hands uh, laid upon. So the laying of the hands can also, um, it could be practiced <clears throat> doing um, sacrificial uh, programs. So we look at that, each one of uh, the different denominations, they have a different method of how they do it. Um, in the Baptist church, um, it takes place after a Christian, after a believer uh, is baptized. Um, they lay of the hands. Um, in the Pentecostal, they practice laying of the hands as part of prayer and divine healing. Um, and in the Catholic faith, they practice, they, they still use it. And the Catholic faith as well, um, a lot of times to confirm um, the pastors. So when verse six of laying of the hands, it's, it's important. And um, we feel that it will uh, allow the Holy Spirit to come as well. So in verse seven in Acts six, it said, and the word of God increased and the number of disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly and a great company of the priests were obedient to faith. Uh, what does that mean when it says the word of God increased that means it, it, it continued to be to be spread it continued, continued to be, to be spread, spread. Mm -hmm. and the number of disciples multiplied not apostles not thank you sister uh Patton. not not apostles but the number of disciples those that belong to christ those that i wonder they they multiplied greatly and a great number of priests were obedient to the faith. Um, you know, so God's message in verse seven, we can see it spread it. It continued to um, go forth. It can, the word started going out. And that's some things that um, we should be doing even today. You know, we have conversations about a lot of things when we, um, you know, meet people, when we see people, a lot of times we don't spread the word of God. I think if, uh, you know, I, I know you're saying that we, you know, Sundays is enough, Wednesdays are enough, but um, even during the week, you know, even when we're having uh, our conversation, we need to spread uh, God's word. <clears throat> the disciples, it says here, um, they multiply greatly. They continue to increase in number. Um, we could see a lot of churches, uh, Brother Smith, that are growing rapidly in numbers. And uh, sometimes, uh, many times it's the word of God, but then it may be other things that's drawing them there. Right? Look at, uh, we, we could use Church of the Highlands, for example. Um, something is drawing them to it. Could it be the word of God? Or could it be the fellowship? Could it be the way they conduct their service? Um, and I'm sure some of you know some people that have been there. Have, have they expressed any uh, ideas or reason why they join and the reason why they go other than, or oh, they get them out in an hour? And, um, and they're also, they're very, um, you know, they provide a uh, real service to their members, mm -hmm. like members mm -hmm. who are in need. Mm -hmm. um, um, I hear that they are really diligent in um, not just taking care of a member's spiritual needs, but if a member is in need of, of, of you know, help, finances. The, the finances, mm -hmm. et cetera, 
that they are, you know, they're good about doing that. Yeah. They also help a lot of other churches. Uh, they help other churches too, other churches and their members when they, they need them. But one of the reasons they're able to do that is um, they have some healthy givers in the Church of the Highlands. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked with a guy um, in, uh, in Birmingham that was, um, he, would, he was a member and he was also a business owner. And when I say he poured money into that church, he poured about 100,000 a year out of his, of course he made that. But what I'm saying, they have some, they have some big players, they have some millionaires um, in that church. When they build a church, it's already paid for. Um, they have a strategy, they have a plan, they have that this strategic plan to, to get it going. Did I hear our sister uh, Brown, Anita? Was that someone else talking? Yeah, it was me. It was more on the lines of what Nina was saying. Um, okay. Yeah. She said it. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, they're able to help, and I, I don't disagree um, with that. But if that's the only thing drawing the members to it instead of the word, then, um, you know, that could be a problem. So when we look at this verse, it showed that the first part in Acts have ended in, in verse 7, right? The first part about how the church in Jerusalem grew, and then when you look at uh, this verse also <clears throat> is one of several summaries uh, found in the book. There's uh, statements that let us know that the story has reached its important. When he get down, it said, and the word of God increased and the number of disciples multiplied and a great company of priests were obedient. Then, and Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders. So it ends there and then it goes um, somewhere else. <clears throat> You know, the story has reached this, this, the, of his importance. It's important to know that the word is um, increasing. It's important to know um, the disciples are multiplying. I mean, we, we love it when we see people come to Christ. We love it when we see them want to do God's work and they're happy about doing it. Um, we love it when uh, they want to learn more about the word of God. And uh, that should be something that, you know, that would keep us excited, especially if we get a new member. We want them to start uh, learning about the word of God and being uh, happy about doing it. Luke, in this, he described um, the ministry in Jerusalem for the persecution. But then um, he also <clears throat> lets us know after Stephen death, uh, it would take the gospel to the Samaritans and to the Gentiles. Okay, so let's look at verse <clears throat> number eight. Um, uh huh. That's right. Before we move on from um, seven. From uh, yeah. Well, actually, I had to come in at six because okay. I I just want to sort of um, expound on the laying of the hands. So you were explaining about. When uh, new pastors are, when past, when people are ordained, mm -hmm. um, new pastors are installed, that there's a laying of a hand. And I, you know, just want to make sure everybody understands that, that, you know, there are multiple reasons why you, you have the laying of hands. And I think probably most of us are most commonly think about when people are laying hand and it's for healing uh, or deliverance mm -hmm. purposes. But in the case of hands being laid on the, the, the pastors um, and bishops, people who are being elevated, that's that's for the purpose of, of bestowing a blessing and and also bestowing the authority of the office to which they uh, have been elevated. So that's the purpose, they laying on hands to bless them in that walk mm -hmm. of that position that they are being elevated to. <clears throat> that's why you have the laying of the hands Amen. when people are yeah. ordained, et cetera. Thank you. And, and you want those hands laid, especially for the ones that you know the blessings will come through. Well, depending um, on the hand. And it is yeah. Right. yeah. And it is right. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Any questions? Thank you, uh, Sister Nina. Okay. So in verse eight, um, Stephen, 
full of faith <clears throat> and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. He, he, you know, full of grace and power, he did these great things. He was a Jew who spoke Greek. He was one of the seven helpers. He was one of uh, the seven deacons. And God is showing through Stephen, you know, his truth, his power. Um, he's showing through Stephen what he can do. God can use us in any way um, that he wants. And we have to, you know, we have to know that. We have to believe uh, that if God could use that person or that, he can use me. Um, we tell a lot of people after we've gone through uh, storms, we've gone through trials and tribulations and didn't know how he, we was going to get out and how God used us to draw other people in, how God will show our testimony can, can help others. Because God can use anybody in any way uh, he wants. He can use, even, uh, use us even when we're just doing practical jobs uh, like Stephen. Uh, and I hope uh, you believe that he can. God says that um, with men, things are what? Impossible, right? But with God, all things are possible. Um, when you let uh, people need to know your testimony, um, people that feel like they never going to make it after they've been told all their life growing up, you ain't going to be a nobody. I was told that. Praise the Lord. That uh, that was. <laughs> that God had other plans. You know, when you're in school and you're bad and you think you're this gangster, you ain't gonna live till you, till, you know, you're 18. But that may not be in God's plans. Um, in the, uh, you know, ninth grade, I was a class clown. Uh, no. Red flags, yes, I was. Teachers laughed at my jokes. Principals laughed and, and they flagged me the first semester. But I graduated with a full ride scholarship. I had to change. What I'm saying is God could use anybody. Looking at me in the ninth grade, I wasn't going to make it. But God had other plans. So even some of you have testimonies that, you know, oh, I didn't know I could make it. But with God, Things are possible. I didn't know I could get this job. Well, God, things are, pop, uh, are possible. I didn't think I could do this in, you know, by myself. But with God, all things are possible. Yes, Lord. So, so with Stephen, yeah, when you say, I can't raise these children. With God, all things are possible. I can't uh, get yes. to this. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I, I just wanted to say... Um, these guys were uh, were not, in a lot of ways, uh, promoted up to be equal with the apostles. Mm -mm. But like you said, they were given some, and I, I'm not trying to downplay it, but menial work to do. Mm. Uh, they were assigned uh, not to be the preacher, not to be yeah. the teacher, but they were all they were doing. They were serving the widows right. who had missed their meal or meals mm -hmm. during the day. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think some. You know, I, I'm not sure if is that uh, some of our people feel like um, the tasks they are assigned are medial or menial and don't mean very much or or they're just irresponsible and not taking on, um, you know, whatever the task is that they are assigned to do. But, so, so, you know, so, so in, in some ahead. ways you're saying some people may think that the task may be beneath them. Or right. they're too good for that. Okay. Yeah. Right. I can see right. that. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, you know, I just, you know, I just, I, I try to look at, you know, in comparison to what, it's happening here in Acts to St. Peter today, you know, mm -hmm. and it's just, you know, in so many cases, so many of our people are assigned to offices or, you know, committees, that kind of thing. And they just don't carry out their responsibility for whatever reason. Yeah. And, and, and some people do feel that, and I'm not saying St. Peter, but I've been in, I've been in, several churches where um that job wasn't 
good enough or this assignment. No, I'm way above that. Um, and we shouldn't. I don't know. The Bible doesn't say that these men complained after they was chosen to do that. <laughs> but it does say they was chosen and um, they did the work. And one of them even was a preacher. Uh, Stephen, not only did he go out, but he was also, uh, he preached as well. But thank you, uh, Brother Smith, for bringing it out. It's important to know um, that, you know, the job, uh, it didn't say they complained. I'm sure if it did, uh, they would have it somewhere. This guy or this person, they went ahead and did what they was chosen to do, right? And that was to take care. Okay, the apostles may have seemed like they were <laughs> a little up on themselves, right? Because when, when it says that should we stop, you know, and take care of the widows, should we stop and do that? Or do we continue with our daily activities, right? Well, because That's the apostles they, had a specific calling. Yeah, they I have think, a calling. I don't think it was that they felt um, helping to feed or worrying about feeding the widows was necessarily beneath them. That was not their calling. So, mm. You know, they were, they, so basically they were saying, you know, this is not what we have been commissioned to do. We need to be about the business that the Father has commissioned us to do. That's why, you mm. know, I always say, People need to be very, you know, be very alert. Listen carefully to the spirit. Know what your true calling is. You know, mm. and when you know that calling, that's the calling that you continue to walk in regardless to what happened. So I don't think they thought they were above anybody. They they had a specific purpose and they were mm. and they were determined to stay walking in that purpose. You know, yeah. like you were saying, you need to get somebody to do this because this ain't mm. what I do. Mm -hmm. you know, this is not and, what we were called to do and they can't do everything either and see that's what, one of the problems we yeah. have in our church sister Nina right. that when one person try and do it all it will not work mm -hmm. one person yeah, passed, uh, it. <laughs> yeah. yeah Pastor I wanted to add mm -hmm. what Nina was saying also on top mm -hmm. of that the church has grown to you know we, yeah. we we have thousands and thousands of people have grown have become a part of the church and 12 people mm -hmm. can't do all of that that's you right. know we have to divide the work up uh, so that's that that's know. the importance so of imagine it. yeah right imagine yeah, uh you know you know just our little what 100 200 i remember members we have you know we can't expect just the pastor to do all of the work. You know, the work has to be divided. Uh, mm. That's right. Because the pastor can't be everywhere for everybody. You know, that's where some of us others come in that if, if a need arises, that you Thank step you in. Your, your class leaders, okay? Thank God, I was getting ready to say that. Are, are sub pastors, <laughs> y'all are sub pastors. Yeah. Yeah. I say again, Know your role. So what yeah. where you supposed to be operating in? So mm -hmm. you can't be everywhere for everybody. Thank, all thank the, the time. Lord for class leaders. Thank the Lord for class leaders. Great, great. You all are pulling out uh definitely some important points. So uh one, it was only 12, the church was growing, uh disciples were growing. It's always good to delegate. I mean, if you know somebody, the CEO of a company can't do everything. They have to have some other people and they have to delegate in order for things to work. Same thing with the church. You know, if you got two or three people doing everything, the church is not being edified like it should. You know, I have been in churches where the steward board was the trustee board. Wow. Why? Why? Because that's how big it was. Until no, we I said, eight. wow, that's, that's, yeah. I, could, I can't imagine that. Yeah. May I, may you I can't have... imagine, but that's what happened. <laughs> you mean we, you didn't have enough members to make have up enough two members boards. to make up two boys? Somebody need to be looking at some merging. <laughs> uh, uh, Pastor, uh -huh. Pastor Ms. Young, Ms. Young is trying to say something. Come on, Ms. Yeah. Young. I just wanted to say, now, I, I've been in, in the Baptist church all my life till I came up here to St. Peter. 
it, it's totally different. But it's still almost the same. There are some things that the pastor, well, we didn't have a presiding elder back then. But mm-hmm. I'm not talking about the elder now. I'm talking about the pastor. There are some things that the pastor should be doing by the pastor and hand it down to the other people. I, I know the pastor can't do everything, and everybody can't do the same thing. But what I'm saying, the pastor is the head of the house. I'm the head of my house. You're the head of your house. Before you make any decision, come to the pastor. Ask the pastor first. Should I select this one to speak over that one and speak over that and to do do such and such? Thing? You don't get in the head of the pastor. You, we follow the pastor, and the pastor gives us directional how they do these things. We are not pastor yet. I, I know we are pastor and all that, but we are not pastor. But we are supposed to get our direction from our pastor, as the pastor get direction from the elder, the elder from the bishop, and on down. That's right. Does that make and sense? That makes protocol, sense. protocol, yeah. protocol. Yeah. And That's I, the I, Amazon you know, church way. <laughs> and they they doing a great uh, job there of of um, of um, leading. Everybody's doing a great job. I mean, we I can't say uh, to me them just make decisions without me knowing out just just about everything we know about. Um, but you you're right, you're right, uh, Sister Young. Thank you for for bringing that up. <clears throat> um, where am I? I got a witness on the phone, on the on the line with us. Uh, did I see Kent Long? I thought I did, but Kent Kent is a witness that um, we we've had some of the same. It shouldn't be that way, but until you grow. Yes, um, I'm here. Okay. I was telling them that you were witness that we've seen the same people on, on different boards. Yes. <laughs> because of the, uh, you know, there wasn't enough enough people, but it still worked. Um, and you have to do what God gives you. Um, right. You have to move about what God, whatever God gives you, you make that work. God right. says, right, right, that in the scriptures that, um, you know, he watched what we can handle and then he give us the increase. Yes. Right. On the so, best you um, can with what you got. You do the best you can with what you got. And God will start making a way. He wants to see what where we at, where our hearts at, and where our minds at, and what we think about his house and how we would do it. Okay. So um verse eight ends um the portion of the deacons, and then verse nine goes into what Stephen has brought um before the council. Any any more questions or comments um before we move on as far as the deacons? So we can understand that they still played an important role. And sometimes, you know, we have to take on the responsibilities that we may not feel we that 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 some people may feel that's not them. We take on the responsibilities and see how we can do. You know, my mother-in-law used to tell me all the time, well, tell everybody, if you have a job digging ditches, be the best ditch digger mm-hmm. out there. If you have a job picking up trash, be the best. You know, when I was in college, my work study job, my first one was maintenance. I was going around the campus and pick up trash. I didn't have the office, you know, like some, you know, some of you had the office was in the air, just loving your work study. I had to pick up trash. That was my job. And I had to be the best at it. You know, be happy about doing it because, you know, they made a way. God made a way for some more income, you know, to come in, right? All right. So, uh, Stephen, he's a witness in verse um, uh, 9. You can really say verse 8, but uh, verse 9 through 15, uh, we find that in, in my Bible, it says Stephen is brought before the council. <clears throat> Anybody want to read verse 9? Verse 9 and 10. I read okay. Uh, Pastor. okay. Um, one day some men from the cities of one day some men from the cities of Cyrene and Alexandria and the provinces of Sicilia and Asia started an argument with Stephen. 
-hmm. they belonged to a synagogue called Friedman's Synagogue. Mm -hmm. They couldn't argue with Stephen because he spoke with the wisdom that the spirit had given him. Wow. Isn't that something? Somebody come to you and they want to argue and they really can't argue because, uh, you know, you know just as much as them. When you speak with wisdom, you know, when the scripture tells us a soft answer, turn away rap, a lot of times when people want to come to you and chew you out and that soft answer calms them down. Right. Have you ever seen that? Mm -hmm. I've worked. Yeah, you, you see that one. One of the um, just about every job I've been on, you know, we you, you have these irate managers and they yell and they talk, you know, and they and they intimidate the, the workers. And I come along and have a soft answer. And they rather deal with me than they deal with their manager. So I said that to say this, that also begin to rub off on the managers when they see that it don't take all that. <laughs> When people see it, don't take all this yelling and arguing. When you could be, you can answer with wisdom. You can speak with, and then you don't have to argue. They couldn't win the argument in verse ten because Stephen spoke with wisdom. The Spirit gave him this wisdom. Isn't that what it say? And they were not able to resist. Mm -hmm. The Spirit Stephen, gave. Mm -hmm. Stephen was filled with God's favor and power. In favor and, and power. And the important thing is evidently. Stephen stayed operating under that spirit, not in the mm -hmm. flesh. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, in the Freedmen's, you read that. The Freedmen's, they were slaves once, but their masters had freed them. When you go back and, and, and um, do the history of them. Um, the freedmen also, there they was Jews that was part of them, who was the ancestors, they had been slaves. Um, so they did not like what Stephen was saying. They had a problem with what he was saying, and uh, but they couldn't defeat it because he was full of power. He was full of faith and power. He did great works and, and miracles among the people. They couldn't defeat it. And folks, when we know that and when we use God's wisdom, and when we follow the Holy Spirit, and we let the Holy Spirit guide us, then um, we can speak. And others, just like them, can't argue with us. The message came from the Holy Spirit. The reason why he was speaking, the message came from the Holy Spirit. When we pray and we ask the Spirit to guide us, when we pray and ask the Holy Spirit to give us direction, things are much, much better when we do it in our own power. Remember, Jesus had promised that he would give words. He would give wisdom to his disciples. Y'all remember that? He told them. He would send the spirit. When he go back, he'll send the spirit. He'd give them that wisdom. He would give them the words to say. He promised that enemies would not uh, win their arguments against him. Let's look at Luke 21 and 15. Dr. Luke, can I, I read it? This is one verse. <clears throat> uh, Luke 21 and, and 15. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom. This is Jesus talking to it's a, the signs of his coming. I will give you uh, a mouth and wisdom which your adversaries, who's the adversaries? What is adversaries? Those that are against you. Those that yeah. oh, go ahead. Who is that, Brother Smith? Go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna say what you just said. People that come yeah. up against you. They come against you. It said your adversaries shall not be able to gain, say no, resist. Jesus is saying that. He's saying that to them. He's telling us the same thing. You know, a lot of times we don't need to try and win an argument especially by arguing back with them. Sometimes, you know, silence is a win. Sometimes turning away is a win. Sometimes walking away is a win. So verse 11, it says, so that in, in the King James Version, Sister Nina, I want you to read verse 11 out of yours too. 
Then they suborned men which said, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. Did Nina disappear? Uh, okay. I'm sorry, no, you wanted me to read from, <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I, was, uh, I was looking at the Luke verse you were reading, so I had turned from my ex. Oh, sorry that, about that. that. I was, uh, what am I doing, Lord? <laughs> Acts 6 and 11. Okay, I, I said, thank you, because I sure forgot the, the, the verse. <laughs> okay. All right, Acts 6 and 11. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then they bribed some men to lie. Mm. They paid some men. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. These men said, we heard him slander Moses and God. My Lord. The liars stirred up trouble among the people, the leaders, and the scribes. Mm. So they went to Stephen, took him by force, and brought him in front of the Jewish council. Amen. That's good right there. The See, your, yours made it plain, especially verse 11. <laughs> so those Jews, they, they paid money to some men. You know, it's, 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 it's evil. And low down to to make up a lie to um, to go and you pay somebody. They told him in to say this. We heard they paid him to go say it. We heard Stephen speak against Moses. He didn't speak against Moses. What reason would he do that? What he didn't speak against Moses, but they paid someone to do it. And folks, when we take money to um, dig a ditch for somebody, we may as well dig too. You know, God is a God that sees all know. I mean, when you go and you pay and you you make lies and you speak uh, false stuff uh, about other people, um, we shouldn't do that. We should know the truth before we speak it. We should know what's going on um, with that person, if it's true or not, before we go and say, you know, somebody call us up and tell us some things. And then before we go, we need to find out and, and, and do it research for ourselves that it's true. But they paid a man full of the Holy Spirit. Now, they let you know when, when Jesus said, remember when Jesus said, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. <laughs> he's telling the disciples, he, he's saying that even when we're doing things in his name, they hate him, they're going to hate me. They're going to hate you doing things in his name. But what I'm, what, what he, what we said, what I'm trying to say is <clears throat> we can't bring up false information on people you don't pay you know you you pay some men they told him to say this we heard Stephen speak against Moses and we heard him speak against God he didn't do that the Holy Spirit is not going to allow him to do that but when we get to let move the spirit out the way and be led by our own self that might happen you know Stephen enemies they could not defeat him and when we have enemies that come up against us and they can't uh, defeat us. They'll try everything they can to harm us. They can win the arguments. So they win and they pay some men to lie. Right? Stephen speaking against Moses. He's speaking against God. They paid him to lie. And they said Stephen was not, and he wasn't speaking against God. And this is a very serious matter. Remember, they took religion way, way, way serious back then, really serious. I mean, we take it serious now, but you had some hardcore Christians. It's a serious matter. You don't blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, right? She read 12. So <clears throat> when we look at 12, it said, and they stirred up the people. And the elders and the scribes, and they came upon them and called him and brought. Now you got people stirred up. Oh, he said something against God. I'm mad about that. He said something against Moses. Somebody could have loved Moses, you know. Knew, it, it, you know, he he stirred them up now. So they made the people and the leaders angry of some false information. And 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 that happens today to where people will stir up stuff, right? 
about people mm -hmm. and lead and, and, and it don't even be true. Because mm -mm. I had it happen to me one time in the uh -huh. AME Zion church. Yeah. You know, and I and I, I you know I, and it, it, it took me a while to kind of get over that happening yeah. to me the way it did. You know, mm -hmm. um, but Lord knows in heaven the person lied on me. I didn't mm. even know the person I was supposed to be in the relationship with. My Lord. I didn't even see, I, I finally got to see who that person was about three months after the lie had been told. Mm -hmm. But I didn't even know the man. I mean, I knew of him because he, yeah. he pastored a church that St. Peter, you know, we had been there and we would often go mm -hmm. to that church for uh, um, checkup meeting and uh, annual conference, Metropolitan, Metropolitan. Mm -hmm. um, but I did not be more know that man than a man in the moon. <laughs> and somebody told a presiding elder that I was uh, dating that man. Mm -hmm. and, and I did not know and that man. there was no truth to it. No, yeah. and that man didn't really know me. He knew of me because I was a district officer. I, so therefore I was kind of visible, visible, you know, on the, the conference. But we, we didn't know each other. Yeah. But this person told that lie in the thing that hurt me the most was nobody really came to me with telling me what, what yeah. happened. The only thing yeah. that happened that year, I got stripped of all of my appointment, all of my position. Mm. I just got mm. stripped down. I'm like, what's mm. going on? Mm. And a person and nobody said anything. Right, but a person who shouldn't have been divulging information because of her position to have been aware of it, she did mm -hmm. come to me because she wanted to know from me was that true? Because yeah. you know we were kind of somewhat friends, and mm -hmm. when I found out, I was just devastated. I was, and yeah. I was even worse hurt when I found out who perpetrated what, that lie. Yeah, yeah. And you know the, what the what what the famous word is: a lie don't care who tell it. And and some people would just roll with it. Some people like to keep up confusion. Some people like some people don't want to see people move up or move around or move. You know, I can't tell you. I mean, when I came over here, Lord have mercy from 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 my nominee, I, I saw that. I saw the backstab. I saw the lies. I saw, and and that's not, you know, the way Christians are supposed to operate. When you're full of the Holy Spirit, when you're full of faith and when you're full of power, that's not how it's supposed to be. Thank you, Sister Nina, for sharing that. And I know others will have testimonies too. And then you know. that's what they call church hurt. You know, yeah. If, yeah. if if I if I wasn't operating in the spirit on the the, <laughs> yeah. the, 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 the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I'd have been gone from the AME yeah. time church. That was That's a right. very hurtful experience. Yeah. You know, yeah. but hey, I was yeah. like Zach Zachariah, why should I come down? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh -uh. Yeah. That's right. And it and and it can. It definitely can hurt. I mean, and that's why a lot of people leave church. They they leave and don't look back. Some leave and come back if they, you know, if that person leave that was holding them back. But, you know, we should not, as brothers and sisters in Christ, be making up stuff. Definitely don't pay nobody to make up stuff, right? But in this, in 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 verse twelve, they stirred up the people. They stirred up the leaders. <laughs> they made the people mad. They made the teachers mad. You know, the ones that taught the law, they was angry. <laughs> you know, that you know, when you could go so far, and some <laughs> people sometimes can play little tricks, Sister Brown, and think it, you know, they tell this little lie and think it won't go nowhere, and then it blows up and it get out of hand, it get out of proportion, and you got everybody upset and all mad at somebody that hadn't done anything wrong. And it's important that we stay within uh, the spirit, right? So the Jews right. immediately, you know, the <laughs> Jews, they immediately, um, they see Stephen. She, she read it. They, 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 they called him. They brought him to the council. They brought him in front of the Sanhedrin, right? They brought, in verse 13, and they set up false witnesses which said, this man ceased not to speak. Blasphemy words against the holy place and the law. You know, they brought him there to um, 
some men to tell lies about. False witnesses. You know, they brought him there. They said, this man always say bad things about our holy temple and about Moses' law. And that's, that wasn't true. He said, I'm false witnesses. That, that wasn't true. He, he, and we should do that. Verse 14 said, for we heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered. We heard him say that. Stephen said that Jesus would change all the customs. They didn't hear him say that. Oh, yeah. So we don't supposed to believe everything we hear, right? That's true. That's true. They say he insulted the temple. He insulted the law. He didn't do that. Right? <clears throat> that right. made the Jews very angry. Um, because the, the temple, right? When they talk about the temple, you know, that's the mm -hmm. center. The temple, you don't talk about the temple. That's that's where they worship at. We don't talk about the church. You know, a lot of people, you don't want them talking about St. Peter, right? That's where you're working to worship at. You don't want them talking about your church, wherever you're a member of. That's where, that's where you worship at. Right? Okay. Who, who is that? Is that Sister Hinton? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the enemies of Stephen, the enemies of Jesus, they also paid men <laughs> to tell lies. And that's something that I wanted to drive on. They lied about the front of the Sanhedrin. They lied, told him, lied and said he told um, complete stories. They um, said he talked about the temple. Well, they go and worship. He talked about the law. He didn't do none of that. That was his enemies. Mark 13 and 2. Mark 13 and 2. And it says that, and Jesus answered him and said, Seest thou that these great buildings, there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall be thrown down. So Jesus said that men would knock the temple down, right? He said they would, but the Jews wanted proof that Jesus had the authority from God. In John 2 and 19, Jesus told them that if you destroy this temple, he promised that he'll build it up in three days. So the temple was important to them. Well, they went and where they worship, okay? Our last verse, um, 15, it says, and all that sat in the council, looking steadfastly on him, saw his face, and it has been the face of an angel. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. Everyone, everyone in the Sanhedrin, they stared at Stephen. They, they looked in his face. His face looked like an angel. What does an angel look like? Anybody? Anybody ever seen an angel? Nope. Uh, Isn't it just not, described as a heavenly being? It's described as, yeah, that's a heavenly being. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He what else? He just had a glow about him. He, he could, had a glow about him. Brother Smith? No, I was just going to say, um, uh many of the uh descriptions in the bible are not what we think of as that's right as an angel but yeah uh like nina said probably had that glow about it his face was shown it looked like the face of an angel it was glowing it was a different kind of look everyone it says all of them and they sat in the council looking instead everybody looking at him that he was brought before the council. They stand and they're looking at him and his face is glowing. All this false information they said about him, he should have been beating them up. He should have been giving them some choice words. Reva, some of them four letter words, he could have been uh, talking back to him, but it didn't say that, right? When you know that you have, God have your back, 
You don't have to sit there and argue about it. When you're doing what Jesus said you do, you don't have to sit there and 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 defend yourself. Stephen Face, it, it was like an angel um, when he stood in front of him. Remember Moses also. <laughs> remember when he was brought before, when he brought the law down the mountain from uh, in Exodus 34 and 29, remember his face. He was glowing. Both Stephen and Moses' face were glowing. Why? In that, in those days, it was, it was a, um, it was confirmation that 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 God approved them. You know, Luke made it clear <clears throat> that Stephen had a blessing from God. <clears throat> he had the grace and the power. When we looked at eight, he was full of faith and power. He did great miracles among the people. Right? He has, and his face shone like an angel it was necessary um it, it really it, it well it wasn't necessary that Stephen had to speak it wasn't necessary God showed him only God can change the face his face to show it look like it. he couldn't do it himself right uh, pastor could you say that it was the glory of God that was shown Listen, on his face we could say that just like we Moses when he saw God. Mm -hmm. When Moses saw God, guess what? His face. His face was glowing. Go ahead, sister. I when Moses I saw. <laughs> we can say that. Is that sister Mom? Yes. Okay. So Stephen didn't have to say a word. When you got all these people looking at him, now his face have changed. They they looking at his face is different now. He had this glow that told everybody that he was the son, that he was a servant of God. Told everybody he was one of God's people. Told everybody he was chosen. Told everybody he was full of the Holy Spirit. Told everybody he had power because he, you know, that God had the power to do that, right? And and remember, the people of the Sanhedrin they would have known. Um, when they saw his glow, it probably reminded them of Moses' glow. Mm -hmm. It was saying That's that if it, 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 yeah, it basically was saying that God is not against Moses. He's like Moses. He, uh, that, 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 uh, Stephen was like Moses. He was a faithful servant, just like Moses. Right? Right. Okay. So when um, we're we going to stop here in verse 15 and pick up uh, chapter seven next week, where Stephen preaches to the council. He brought before the council now. He's, he's brought before the council. He have this false, all these false witnesses, all these people lying on him. And now when we go into chapter seven, he preaches to the council. Interesting. It's going to get very, very, very interesting. Okay. Thank you all for uh, being um, in um, Bible study tonight. We finished chapter six where the deacons were appointed and Stephen was brought before the council, lied on, um, talked about, was paid, paid people to, to lie on him. And he still didn't break down and give in and, um, and Stephen is going to be one that will be stoned to death. But also, um, while he's being stoned, Stephen's going to look up into heaven. And he's going to see Jesus standing on the right. He's going to see him standing up. And this is the only part, one of the only places you see in the Bible where they said Jesus standing. Because you always hear about Jesus sitting mm -hmm. on the right hand of God. But this scripture is going to say, that Jesus is standing. Amen. All right. Well, that's enough about that. Um, we've. I hope you've learned something about the deacons and, and about Stephen. And uh, prayerfully, if God say the same, it's um, is next week the second son, um, second. I don't know if that's district. Um. Actually, yeah. This is the second, and I don't oh, think district. 
Yeah, I, I don't think, think they're going to yeah. resume any more District Bible studies for the summer. Until next year? Okay. Yeah, that's what Ms. Cole told me about two months ago. All right. All right. Well, next week, the Lord say the same. We'll pick up in Chapter 7. All right. Do we have any um, any announcements before we take prayer requests? Because I had a few. If we did. Um, yes, sir. Uh, just want to remind everybody about Sunday morning will be Children's Day. And hope everybody will come out and support our kids. Uh, they uh, they got a quite a little surprise for you uh, from last night. I saw Miss Robin and uh, several of the other ones over at the church. They got a surprise for you Sunday morning. So uh, we look forward to supporting our our children. Uh, also, for those of you who are involved in the outreach ministry on the 18th, which is Saturday. Uh, we'll be going out at 10 o'clock to um, walk our neighborhood and uh, do a little cleanup. So uh, please be present. All of you that can join us for prayer, we're going to meet at Bethel Baptist Church at about 8.30 and have prayer uh, before the whole, you know, Bethel, Beulah, and the rest of the churches will be joining us there. We'll be uh uh, leaving there to go out and do our walkthrough. But just want everybody to be at church uh, Sunday morning for our um, Children's Day program. Amen. Thank also, you, just uh, want you to know, uh, Pastor, uh, Mrs. Cotton is on the line today. Okay. Hello, Sister Cotton. Hello, everybody. And how are Hello. you? You, you, your, your phone called me like five times today, but every time I answered, you hung up. Uh, Shonda, I, I sometimes I, I get a call like that. And I can't get it through for some reason. Okay. Well, I'm glad you're doing better. Hey, you I'm feeling better better, today. I have to have a lot of, I have to have a lot of assistance, but you know, I'm not acquainted with the assistance, so it's sort of yeah. hard, but anyway. They hadn't never did the surgery yet. Oh, well, we going to keep you lifted up in prayer. I, I did go by and see her yesterday. I, I she was looking good. Yep. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. I thank you. Thank you for your kindness and your prayers. Amen. All of us has been yes, praying for yes. you. Yep. Yes, sir. Thank All right. Anybody else on the line? Thank you. Um, hello, Pastor. Hi. Um, I just wanted to remind everyone that uh, Quality Conference is um, the 21st. Uh, it's on a Tuesday, Tuesday the 21st, from um, beginning at 6 o'clock. And I need your reports in as soon as possible. So okay. those of you who are reporting, please get your reports sent to me Um as early as you can, and I appreciate that. Also, our Vacation Bible School date, uh, we've looked at them again, and we're going to go, we're changing it to from June 26th through June 29th. Um, is that okay with you, Pastor? 26th through the 29th? Yes, we will kick off that Sunday the 26th and end that Wednesday the 29th. Oh, okay. That's great. Okay. I'm good with that. All right. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. All right. Uh, June the 18th. Um, I know that uh, Brother Smith mentioned about the uh, the prayer and the cleanup, but also June the 18th, um, uh, class number 10, I believe, is uh, at 10.30 a.m. would need strong men to deliver water and Capri Suns um, that day. Is that to a school, Sister Brown? I can't remember. No, it's That's to the Y. That's to where? To the Y. Okay. Mm -hmm. To the Y. All right. Uh, Pastor, don't forget about Stuart Board meeting that morning at 9 o'clock as well. Yeah. On 18th, 9 a.m. Steward board meeting at 9 a.m. Um, also, 
Uh, mm-hmm. The singles ministry as well, Reverend Freeman. Um, our very own pastor uh, will be doing a second session on moving forward after divorce or um, uh, bereavement. But, uh, you know, anyone is welcome to come out and just sit in that session. We're actually going to have a luncheon at the church on that Saturday the 18th, and it won't start until 1230. So you guys are welcome to join us. All right. If you're single, if you want to join us, yep. That sounds great. Well, I got a busy Saturday. That day don't. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, Ben, you just said y'all, y'all steward board meetings at nine, but in the in the walk. So did I get the right date for the neighborhood walk? Mm-hmm. Um, it's also the yes. 18th, and we meet at yeah. Bethel at 8:30. Yes, we're, we're we're gonna meet at Bethel at 8:30 for prayer because the rest of them. We'll be starting their walk at nine. We're not starting our walk until ten, okay, right after gotcha. uh, okay. right after steward board meeting. Okay. All right. Also, uh, the the uh, backpack connection uh, kickoff is uh, on July the seventh through the seventeenth. So we'll be getting a slot. Uh, that's at the University Mall for. Um, volunteers to come out for you know to help support but we'll pick a day and a time that's good um but it start that uh, it's be 10 days from the 7th through the 17th and then i think on the 16th is when they want to they're going to try and have the um the what well, a giveaway of july july 16th at um uh, what is it south i mean is woodland um no the school right down the street from us. West Lawn. Am I saying that right? Yes, West, yes, Lawn, Middle West, Lawn. Middle West Lawn Middle School, yeah. So it'll be in the cafeteria. Um, and uh, Church of the Highlands will be uh, doing all the cooking, the hamburgers and hot dogs and uh, giving, uh, giving away. Yeah. So uh, I keep bring you more information as we um, get more information. I know it starts at 10 um, on that day if nothing changes. But I bring more information as I get it. All right, are there any more announcements before we take prayer requests? Okay, you have any prayer requests? Yes, Mrs. Please pray for Mrs. Anna English. That's my daughter's mother-in-law. She suffered a heart attack. Okay. All right. Uh, that was someone else. I'm not all the way well, but I thank the Lord that my pastor called me and prayed for me. So I thank the Lord for all that. Oh, I didn't know you was on, Sister Peace. Oh, yeah. Praise God. <laughs> Your daughter called me accidentally about four times yesterday, uh, Sister Peterson. Oh, she did? Yeah, she was looking for somebody else. <laughs> I hope she found them. <laughs> All right, do you have any more? <laughs> uh, Pastor uh-huh. Can you hear me? I hear you. Uh, this is Roberta Madison. Um, I'm asking the prayers for the Pamela Scrub pam- uh, family, um, the Scrub, the boys, um, that's their mother. She passed away and yeah. her funeral is oh. tomorrow. So the boys asked me to uh, ask the prayers of, for them also. Scrub. Scrub's family. Scrub. Mm-hmm. Okay. Scrub. Scrub. Got it. That's with a B or with a G? S C R U G G S, Scruggs. G G S, okay, got it. Thank you. All right, any others before we go to God and pray? Uh, Pastor Freeman, this is Nina. I want mm-hmm. you to pray for my granddaughter, Laura. Laura. She's 13, and um, it, she has a lump in her breast that. Um, 
I guess we won't really know what it is. She has a doctor's appointment for um, ultrasound on the 29th of June, which I'm trying to get bumped up earlier because it's driving me crazy. But please pray for Laura um, and our family as we um, support her through this, this, this time. Okay. Just sort of anxious. All right. Pastor Freeman, uh, yes. I'm asking for prayer for myself. Sister Robin? Yes. Okay. Sister Robin, um, also, I need to meet with, uh, I'll send you a text. Okay. I was going to okay. call you anyway, so. All right. Anybody else? Pastor, I'm hoping that you will continue to pray for Anthony Jones, mm -hmm. who's dealing with the issues that he's experiencing emotionally. Uh, I do appreciate that. Yes, ma'am. Keep me in your prayers. Is that Sister Cotton? Yes. Uh -huh. you I got you on this. Uh, I have you on this. Would you, uh, would you put Fred Richie, uh, Richie on the prayer list? His wife asked that you would uh, pray for Fred. Okay. Uh, yes, this is Anita. Will you uh, pray for Roy? And Maxine Sanders, please. And I eat you. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. If there's none others, let us go to God in prayer. <clears throat> Dear God, we come this evening. Lord, you've heard uh, the request, Father. We come praying to you, for you said that we should always pray. Yeah. Father, you, then you told us that we should pray for one another, that we should love one another. Father, you tell us to pray without ceasing. Yeah. And you said, Lord, if we delight ourselves in you, uh, whatever we need, Father, you will give the desires of our hearts. Yeah. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. Lord, knowing that so many things are going on around the world, so many things are going on in our community, so many things are going on in our family, in our church family. Yeah. Father, but you said that if we just lay these at your feet, you will do something about it. So, Father, we come collectively in Jesus' name, Lord, asking uh, prayers, Lord, for uh, Mrs. Annie English, Father. We've heard the report that she uh, suffered a heart attack, Father. Father, but we know that you are the heart fixer. We know that you are the heart, uh, the mind regulator. We know that uh, you created the heart, Father. So, Father, we pray, in Lord, that you will heal. Uh, sister, Father, we pray, Lord, that you will give her strength. Father, we pray, Lord, that you will uh, touch her family and friends that are praying for her, Father. And, Lord, change things around. Father, we pray that she would get better each and every day if it's according to your will, Father. And Father, we know that it shall be done. We claim it in Jesus' name. Father, we lift up Sister Cotton, Father. We know that uh, she suffered uh, a fall, Father. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to heal her, Father. We've heard that uh, she may have to have surgery, Father, but we're praying that you're able to heal her without it. Uh, Father, yeah. but if surgery has to take place, we ask, Lord, that you will anoint the doctor that will be uh, performing, anoint the nurses in Jesus' yes, name. Touch them, Father. Uh, give her the care that she needs, Father. And we pray, Lord, as uh, she await, Father, for the answers that you would keep us strengthened. Lord, that you would ease the pain, Father, and help her to feel better. In Jesus' name. Father, we lift oh, yeah, up Sister Lord. Peterson. We've heard uh, her report on last week, Father, but we know that you are God that still love her, Father. You have brought us through, Father. You have uh, given us strength. You have given her a voice to speak and that we can hear, Father, that you're still able to protect, that you're stable, still able to keep our sister, Lord, even all the way in Mobile. So we pray, Lord, that you would keep your uh, care around her, Father. Touch her children, her daughters that's caring for her. Give them strength and endurance, Father. We pray, Lord, for healing uh, with our sister Peterson, Lord. Give her a little more strength uh, that she didn't have earlier, Father. 
and keep her encouraged, Father, that you are the God that still cares. Father, we lift up the Stewart family uh, as they suffered loss and deaths, Father. We pray for comfort for them in Jesus' name, Father. We pray, Lord, that you would give them um, strength during this time of bereavement, Father. Touch them, Father, uh, with your finger of love. Dry every tear from their eye, Father, and let them know, Lord, that, uh, let them know, Father, that you're still with them, Father. You really feel like you're by yourself, Father. I give them your Holy Spirit to let them know that you're walking right there with them, Father. Bring them through it during those times, Father. We ask in Jesus' name. Father, we lift up uh, Pamela Scrubs, Father, as they're uh, needing comfort during this time. Father, as they lay their loved one to rest tomorrow, Lord, give them more strength that they need, Lord. Give them the comfort. Surround them with people, Lord, that will give them words of comfort, Father, that will let them know that it's going to be okay. Uh, let them know, Father, that they're resting, Father, even though uh, we don't want to see them go, Father. Uh, we pray, Lord, that you will allow them, Lord, to uh, each and every day to get better during their time of bereavement. Give them strength, Father. Uh, bring that yeah. family together in love, Father. Father, we lift up Sister Robin, whatever her request may be, Father, you know. Father, touch her from head to toe, Father. We ask that you would give her what she need, Father. We pray, Lord, whatever's on her heart, whatever she may be experiencing, Father, that you will show her that you're right there with her, Father, that uh, you care, Father, that she can lay it at your feet, Father, and that you will do something about it, Father. We ask that you would touch her family in a mighty way, touch her husband, Father, her children, her grandchildren. I keep your arms around them, Father, and provide whatever they need, Father, give it to them. And Father, help them to remember that uh, you are with them, that you're walking with them. Uh, provide them for it in Jesus' name. Father, we lift up Anthony Jones, Father. Uh, give him emotional rest, Father. Give him strength that he need, Lord, to overcome uh, the things that, that that's trying to bring him down, Father. Lord, tear down any stronghold that keep holding him away from you, Father. Draw him nearer and nearer to you, Father. And let him know that he's still your child and you still love him, Father. So, Father, we pray for him and his uh, grandmother, his auntie, all of them, Father, that care, Father, his sisters uh, that care about him, Father. Put him on the right path, Father, and release him, Lord, from anything the devil is trying to do for him. We ask in Jesus' name. And then, Lord, we lift up Lord. Father, you know what the lump is, Father. We pray, Lord, that you would heal it in Jesus' name. Even before she go to the doctor, Father, we can claim victory that you still perform miracles, Father. We know uh, you created a father. So we lift her up to you, Father. We lift her up, Father, in prayer, Father, that you will fix it, Father. And that when she go, it don't be anything bad, Father. It may uh, that you would turn any doubts that may be going on with her around, Father, any uh, things serious that people may think it is, Father, just show them that it may not be nothing, Father. But Father, if it's not, Father, we pray that whatever it is, that you would heal. And we ask in Jesus' name, Father, collectively, you would touch her from head to toe, Father. Don't let her aunt not worry. Don't let her people not to worry about what's going on, Father. But let them know, Lord, that you got this. Father, I mean, we pray for anyone else, Father. Uh, Reggie, uh, Father, we lift them up in Jesus' name, Father, for strength, uh, Father, and endurance, Father, and whatever uh, may, whatever else that we don't know about, that you already know, Father. We ask, Lord, that you would step into that house, Father. Fix whatever need to be fixed in Jesus' name. And Father, if yeah. I left out anyone, Father, we I pray, Father, that you've heard those that put the requests out. And Lord, that you would move on their behalf, Father. We lift up the church, all the churches on the district, we lift them up to you, Father. Every member, we lift up to you. Every pastor, we lift up to you, Father. Our presiding elder and his family, we lift up to you. We lift up our bishop and his family, up to you, Father. We lift up Alabama, Florida, up to you, Father. And we pray, Father, that you would help us to be on one accord. And Father, we pray that we'll do things, Lord, that are pleasing to you. Father, we ask that you bless every family within our church, Father. Bless every family 
within our district. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank all right. You. you all have a great evening. Oh, let me.